Ever since I was a little girl, I grew up seeing my mom selflessly caring, loving, and compromising her needs to the benefit of everyone around her. Being the only daughter and having my mom as my role model, I grew up thinking that that was the norm. You have to give and give and give your time, your energy, your efforts to everyone around you, made sure everyone was happy and satisfied, and if at the end of the day you had some energy left, you would attend to your needs at last. Does that sound familiar? Now, the snowball grew even bigger when I got two gorgeous, healthy kids of my own. And the urge to keep on giving kept on expanding without my permission. I remember one day, I took those, one of those quick tests on Facebook to know who I am. And to my utmost happiness, I got the result of being a selflessly caring individual. I felt pride fill up my heart as if I was just awarded that Olympic medal for being selfless. I took a screenshot of that, saved it in my phone, and I was like, yes, I am selfless. I'm not selfish. As you can imagine, selfish was a scary word that grew up with me. And I decided to wear that badge of honor of being selfless every single day. And little did I know what will happen next. So the more selfless I became, the more drained I got. And that ticked me off, like, why am I getting drained? How can I be a good mom if I'm not selfless? I was so selfless that I wasn't giving myself permission to be human, to make mistakes. I wasn't giving myself permission to look after myself or to love myself. And that's the first lesson I learned in my journey, which was to give myself permission to be human. Yes, human. Before being a mom, I'm human, and we all humans make mistakes. We are perfectly imperfect human beings, and I deserve to love myself. So I started reading and researching more about self-love. What is self-love? Self-love, unfortunately, has been linked to the negative meanings and effects since the ancient Greeks in the story of Narcissus, who, when he looked at the water and saw his reflection, he fell in love with himself. This built the phenomenon of narcissism, which has been proven to be damaging to the person and everyone around them. So this conditioning of having self-love as selfish has been built way before my mom was born. Way before, we're saying ancient Greeks. Thus, I am in no shape or form blaming my mom for raising me this way or having any grudges against her. On the contrary, I fully believe that she did the best she can with what she knew. And by the way, tomorrow, 21st of March, it's Mother's Day in Lebanon. So happy Mother's Day, Mama, I love you. Thank you. So what is self-love? Self-love, in my opinion, is loving your authentic self and knowing deep down and wholeheartedly that you are enough. Just like that, as I am, in, as I, am I am enough. Self-love doesn't mean loving yourself more than others or loving yourself after you finish loving others. Others are not there. It's as simple as loving your authentic self with all your flaws and imperfections. We've always heard that to love others, you have to start by loving yourself. We never did that, or maybe it got mixed up with self-love and self-care. Let me tell you this. Self-care is taking care of your body. So, for example, eating a healthy meal, or going to the gym to exercise, or maybe booking yourself a spa treatment, or a ticket to a dream destination. All of that, you're taking care of your body. 
And guess what? You owe it to yourself. We were given our bodies to take care of them. So I owe it to myself to eat healthy and to exercise, and I don't expect to be congratulated for that, just like I'm not congratulated every time I stop at a red traffic light, right? We have to stop at red traffic lights, and at the same time, we owe it to ourselves to take care of ourselves. Self-love, on the other hand, is taking care of your inner you. It's giving yourself permission to be human and to make mistakes, and to be kind to yourself when you make mistakes. It's saying no when you want to say no. It's setting healthy boundaries, and it's respecting and honoring yourself. And that flows beautifully to my next lesson, which is treat yourself as you would treat others. And how many times have you championed your friend when he or she fell down? How many times you made them feel better about themselves? And when it came to you, and you failed in a certain project, or you didn't feel good about yourself, or you fell down, you were your strongest critic. Does that sound familiar? So how about today you take a conscious decision to treat yourself as you would treat your best friend? How about today you look at yourself in the mirror, in your reflection, and you would say, I feel you, and it is going to be okay. Lots of research has suggested the positive link between self-compassion and psychological well-being. So individuals with self-compassionate qualities has been proven to be less likely to be affected with mental health issues. So they are more likely to cope with symptoms of stress, they are, have more emotional resilience, they are less afraid of failure, and at the same time, they're less likely to burn out. We are the person we talk to the most, irrespective of how many friends and families we have. We are the person we talk to the most. So our tongue has the power to either build us up or tear us down. So when we are criticizing ourselves, and we do that usually nonstop, we get negative emotions. Negative emotions as, as shame, blame, guilt, sadness, anger, you name it. And this all usually stems from fear. Free, fear of being our authentic self. So when we, when we criticize ourselves, we, our life gets negative. And I want you to look or imagine that negative emotions are like boiling water or a hot stove. So the more I stay in this negative emotion, the more painful my life becomes. It's just as if I'm putting my hand in boiling water for hours, days, or even weeks. So this means that the key is with you. You can choose to remove your hand from the water, from the boiling water, every time you choose to stop criticizing yourself and on the other hand, loving yourself. And you can only do that by talking positively to yourself. They say words create worlds. And our words create our realities. So if I want to feel good about myself, I'll have to talk positively to myself. So is stopping to criticize yourself selfish? Is stopping to criticize and love yourself selfish? Is that selfish? And the third lesson I learned is this one. I'm not for everyone, and not everyone is for me. And you cannot imagine the peace and happiness that realization gave me. 
It actually made me love myself even more because I'm more authentic. I don't want to add any additional layer to be loved by everyone. And I'll be honest with you here. I don't get along with people with a closed mindset versus those with a growth mindset. I can't get along with negative people who find a problem to every solution. I just can't. So how on earth was I expecting that everyone will get along with me if I'm in the first place not being able to get along with everyone? So that made me true to who I am. And I know now, deep down, that whatever I will be doing, I will be attracting the right people. Not all the people, the right ones. And that's what, what is important. I knew that I practiced self-compassion and self-love when preparing for this talk. I gave myself permission to be human and make mistakes. We all make mistakes. Second, I was kind to myself because we all know public speaking is not easy. And third, I knew that not everyone will get this message and that's okay. So I want to confirm that self-love is not selfish. It's loving your authentic self and knowing that you are enough and remembering to put your oxygen mask first if you really want to love and support others. So we know that awareness precedes any change. No one would ever change a behavior if they weren't self-aware on how to change perspective. I know today I planted some seeds and I know that the harvest will be really fruitful if you loved yourself and one, gave yourself permission to be human, two, treated yourself as you treat others or your best friend, and three, if you knew that you are not for everyone and not everyone is for you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.